Hey guys, this is Leah with Scott Leroy Marketing. In today's tip video, I'm going to show you how you can create your DocuSign account from command and also add your DocuSign interactive forms to the account so you can go ahead and access your forms, edit your forms, and send that for electronic signatures. So the first thing that you need to do to create your DocuSign account is log into command. So that's a very important step. The KW DocuSign accounts do need to be created from the back end of command specifically. Okay, unfortunately, if you go to DocuSign.com to sign up for an account, that will not be compatible with command. So first step is we'll go to agent.kw.com, which is where I am on my screen here. We'll go ahead and put in our username and our password. And that'll be the same username and password as for your MyKW account, same as your Kelly login. And we'll click sign in. All right, so once you're logged in, we will wanna go ahead and click on our name on the very top right of command. And of course, feel free to pause the video at any time. So if you're working on still getting logged into command, you can pause the video and there's always a forgot password option if you need to reset that. But once you are logged into command, you would join me by clicking your name on the very top right of command. And then settings from that drop down. So again, our name on the top right of command, and then we want to select settings from that drop down. And that will take you on over to any connected apps or further apps that you can link to command. Now, I like to make sense of this section to think of like a new iPhone or a new Android, any smartphone I get. You know, an iPhone or Android has a lot of great features out of the box, brand new. However, I can always go to my App Store, Google Play Store, and download more apps to increase the functionality of my smartphone. Same concept here with Command in this application section. So, of course, Command has a bunch of really great features out of the box, but you can link up further apps to increase the functionality of Command. One of those apps being DocuSign, okay? So depending on if you have that connected or if you've tried to connect it before, DocuSign might be near the top of your screen. If not, you can scroll down slightly and you'll see that option under Digital Signatures and Transactions here. All right, and we can go ahead and click on Connect Account to the far right of DocuSign. All right, when I do so, it'll pull up the option to put my first and last name, which should autofill in our preferred email address. Now again, as I mentioned, the DocuSign account would need to be created at this time from the KW command backend. So if you've been previously paying for a DocuSign account, um, or you know, you've signed documents in the past with a DocuSign account, unfortunately, that typically would not be compatible with command. Uh, we can try it out. However, typically it would need to be created from command directly, so we would recommend using your KW email address. Alright, so if you can use your KW email address, that is typically preferred to make things easier. However, that is not at all required. Okay, so you can use a another email address, but typically using the KW email ensures that, you know, there was not a previous DocuSign account set up and just makes the process much easier. You can also forward your KW email to any other primary business email you're using. If you need help with that, feel free to shoot us an email, support at scottleroymarketing.com. All right, so once we put in our, our first and last name and the email address we want to use for DocuSign, we'll click on send registration email. All right, so this is good for you to see. I apparently have a DocuSign account created under this email already, so if that's the case, um, even if you're not sure, it'll tell you this email address is already in use, not associated with Keller Williams. So that'll let you know if you already have an existing DocuSign account under the email that you want to use. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to use my KW email instead to get around that. Okay, so I make sure my KW email is added in and I'll click send registration email here at the bottom.
It'll give me this green banner letting me know that it was sent to my email, the DocuSign invite. So once you send that invitation email from the command back in for DocuSign, I can see it's in progress here. All right, so now at this point, I'm going to want to switch over to my email account to find that DocuSign invite email. All right, so next step is go ahead and log into your email. And you should get this pretty instantly within the minute or so. And it'll let you know you've been uh, invited to join DocuSign Rooms. If you're not seeing that, check your spam to see if it snuck into there. All right, but the email address, it'll come from right here if you'd like to pause and search your video or search your um, inbox by this email dse underscore na3 at docusign.net that is typically where docusign notifications will come from including the invite email all right and so all we're doing here is accepting the invite and so from your email inbox look for that docusign email letting you know you've been invited and we'll click accept invite All right, it'll let you know what email address you're creating that under. And we'll go ahead and put in our password. So it must be at least six characters long, and it must not contain the characters, yeah, whatever those are called, or spaces. So I'll go ahead and put in my preferred password. I need to type that in twice. And then I'll need to select a security question. So password question. This will be used to recover your password. So you can go ahead and select any of these. And of course, feel free to pause anytime so you can go ahead and add this in. You can add another security question. I typically do not. And you can go ahead and click activate. We add in our password, our security question, go ahead and click activate. Right, and stay on this page though until it loads because you will need to accept the terms of agreement. All right, so make sure you're looking for this page so we can accept agreement. And then it will take you on over to your DocuSign account where it'll typically pop up authorize here. So I'll click on authorize and that'll bring me back to my command settings. For any reason, if you don't see that authorized box, no worries, you can come directly back into command at this time into your command settings. Either way. And you'll want to click on authorize here. So we'll just need to authorize that to fully link your new DocuSign account to command. So I click authorize and that will pop up this DocuSign login so I can see my correct email here and I want to put in my password that I just created. Um, if you are not getting this pop-up box displaying, that's uh, most likely due to your pop-up blocker being on. Um, that'll cause an issue as well, just, you know, creating uh, DocuSign rooms from your opportunities. So make sure your pop-up blocker is off for this to pop up. All right, if you need any help finding directions on how to turn, up your, turn off your pop-up blocker, honestly, I usually just Google, you know, how to turn off my pop-up blocker in Google Chrome or Firefox or Safari and that'll give you steps to do that right away if you have any trouble feel free to email us support at scottlauriemarketing.com and we'll click login it will prompt you to accept the terms one more time so make sure you do that and that will be the final step to connecting DocuSign to command All right so now I can see that DocuSign is connected here that status, and I can see the preview of what email that is. Now, one final step that you'll typically need to take, depending on your area, is you'll need to add your nerds ID to, to your DocuSign preferences in order to have access to your forms. Okay, so depending on your area, there is an extra step to get your access to forms in DocuSign directly. So just a heads up, your forms themselves will not be in command. They will be in your DocuSign account. And so if you just created that with me, you know, DocuSign should be open in a separate tab here. All right, so look for a separate tab that has this icon here, yellow icon with a download icon, I'd say. All right, so come on back to DocuSign. If you can't find this tab, no worries. Okay, the direct way you want to log into your DocuSign account is real estate 
dot docusign dot com. So that's very important. We are using the docusign room sign. Okay, so that's the um, docusign version built for real estate specifically. So don't go to docusign dot com to log in. Instead, you'll go to real estate dot docusign dot com to log in. All right, you can log in with that username and password you just set. Feel free to pause if you're still looking for your login to DocuSign and so forth. And once you are in DocuSign, let's go ahead and add our form access by clicking on your initials on the very top right. Actually, let's check to see what forms are currently in your account before we link this up. Okay, so typically, um, depending on your area, you will need to add your nerds ID for your documents to display, but certain areas, those will display automatically like North Carolina, um, a few others, but if you click on My Docs on the very top white toolbar, I'm just going to show you how you can see what forms are currently in your account before we add in your Nerds ID to access all of them. So My Docs on the very top white toolbar here, and then let's look, click on Forms on the um, toolbar below that. And that will show you any forms that you currently have in your account just to see if you already have those. Okay, and just a heads up, um, once you click on the folder, you should see those forms display. If you open the forms from here, they will say sample, um, that's normal. However, once you pull those into your DocuSign room, uh, that will allow you to edit the forms and send that for electronic signatures. I'll include in the description of this YouTube video the 30-minute overview of how to use DocuSign with command to create and manage your transactions, and that will show you how to access your forms, edit them, and send for e-signature. Okay, for example, so I have my North Carolina forms automatically displaying, but for South Carolina, the NERDS ID is required for South Carolina forms. Um, most states. Texas requires the NERDS ID to be entered in. New Jersey, Pennsylvania, uh, these are just from memory. Um, so let me show you how you would add that in. There's a bunch more, and I'll give you guys a tool as well to see if that applies to your state. So if you click on your initials or headshot in a circle on the top right of your new DocuSign account, let's go ahead and click on Preferences from that dropdown. All right, so again, on the top right of realestate.docusign.com specifically, click on your initials in a circle, or it might be your headshot if you've added that in. We're selecting preferences from that drop down. Now, on the left hand side, let's go ahead and select integrations. All right, so again, for most states, you will need to add in your NERDS ID in order to have access to all of your forms, your interactive forms, and DocuSign. So it's pretty easy to do so. We'll go ahead and click on Add Provider right here, this blue button. You will want to select the Realtor logo here, because we're going to put in, put in our NERDS ID, right, under the National Association of Realtors. And it will take you to this box to go ahead and validate your NERDS information. So on the very top, we'll want to go ahead and put in our nine-digit NERDS number. If you're not sure of what that is, you can click Find Your NERDS ID right here to look that up. Okay, and that's your ID with NAR, National Association of Realtors. So you'll put your last name and just make sure the last name matches your real estate license and then your association. So choose where you're a member. Um, so for example, for Texas agents, you'll want to go ahead and select Texas Association of Realtors. That would apply to the entire state of Texas. Uh, just to mention a couple others, you know, you'll see Florida Association of Realtors. That'll give you access to all of your boards you're part of in Florida, Pennsylvania. It is a blanket form blanket board to gain access to all of your forms and so forth, okay? Um, and I will include, just to show you guys real quick, I'll include this in the YouTube description as well, but I do have a spreadsheet here. So let me pull that up in a separate browser here. So I just want to show you guys, and I do have a sheet made for you so you can see if your state requires that. And I'll, I'll link this in the description of the YouTube video below, but you'll see here I have the state. 
All right, and if the forms are available with your NERDS ID, and the boards that are in green mean for the entire state of Florida, for example, or for Texas. The entire state, you'll want to go ahead and pick Texas Association of Realtors. South Carolina, same concept here. So go ahead and find, and again, this is linked in the description of the YouTube video, but go ahead and find your state from that list and see if your NERDS ID is required. Okay. It is not required for all states, like California agents, you guys use zip forms instead, so I'll mention that next. Okay, But go ahead and put in your NERDS ID, select your association from the list, and then you should be able to click validate and it will give you, you know, a confirmation message and you'll see that display right here under your providers that that has been linked up. If you have any trouble, if you get any error messages or that gives you any issues, shoot us an email, support at scottleroymarketing.com. We'd be happy to look into it further for you to help troubleshoot that. Uh, lastly, just to mention, you know, California agents, you guys are required to use zip forms. Um, so you will need to go ahead and link up your zip form account by clicking the arrow to the right of where it says zip form. And put in your zip form, username, and password. Um, that is not only for California agents. If your board provides zip forms, you can go ahead and link up your account. Um, I would recommend using the NERDS ID if you have that option to link up your forms, just because it integrates a little easier. However, you can also link up zip forms if you have templates saved in zip forms. Um, you can put in your username and password and go ahead and click Save. I mean, California agents, if that gives you any issues with the login, it's typically an issue with your username. It's not the same username as you use for car.org. Um, so if you need any help finding that username for zip forms, feel free to shoot us an email, support at scottleroymarketing.com. All right, guys, so after you add that in, you should see your forms under My Docs, okay, where we just looked. And you'll want to actually create a new room in order to actually pull in the forms and get those electronically signed. Now, but before I sign off with you guys, just a quick note, make sure you are not creating your DocuSign rooms from DocuSign directly. It is very important that you are creating your transactions from command first, and then it will prompt you to create the DocuSign room from your command opportunity. Okay, and again, I link the 30 minute overview on how to do that, how to create your transaction in command first, so it links properly with your DocuSign room that will help you with a bunch of different features. And again, that's linked below under the YouTube description. I would highly recommend watching that. All right, guys, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. Support at scottleroymarketing.com. We'd be more than happy to help you with any issues you may run into. Okay, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I hope this helped. Take care.